Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about 100 things that I have quit buying since embarking on my zero waste minimalism journey. So not only does this save waste, but it also saves time and money as well. I don't have as much clutter, I don't have as much to clean, so it's just been really freeing in that way as well. Throughout this video, I will talk about some swaps that I've made, some things I've cut out entirely, and also some more eco-friendly, things that I have replaced them with. The point of this video is to encourage you to kind of analyze these things throughout your life too and be like, hmm, do I really need to keep buying this or that or whatever? Or is there another eco-friendly alternative I can use instead or can I just cut it out completely? So I encourage you to ask yourself some of these questions throughout this video. There will be a blog post linked down below. One, if you just like to follow along and read along. And two, if you just wanna check out all of the things that I've said throughout this video in a more compiled list. Along those lines, I know that I talk fast, so if you'd like to, you can actually change the video speed right down here with the little gear icon to whatever speed you prefer. A lot of these switches come down to a few questions that I ask myself when I'm making purchases and when I'm even thinking about making a purchase. And those questions are, can I live without this item? Is there a more eco-friendly replacement for this item that I already have at home or a more eco-friendly item that I can purchase instead? Can I make this item myself? Can I borrow this item from a friend or a neighbor if and when I even need it instead of buying it myself? Let me know down below if you've already cut out any of these things and other things that you might have cut out of your life that I didn't mention. And with all that in mind, let's go ahead and jump right in to this video. The first category that I'd like to talk about is the kitchen. The first item is paper towels. I think they are unnecessary, so instead I just use rags and towels which can be washed and used over and over again. I also don't buy apple cider vinegar anymore and that is because it is so easy to make at home. Instead of throwing those apple peels away or into the compost, I put them in a jar with some water and some sugar and I made my own apple cider vinegar that lasts forever. I mean, not literally forever, but it lasts me a long time. I also don't buy meat, dairy, and eggs anymore. I don't buy any animal products because I, I quit eating animal products almost two years ago now. It helps me to live a more sustainable lifestyle. I'll leave some articles and some past videos of mine linked down below to talk more about that. I'm not gonna get into that here. I also don't buy sponges for my dishes anymore. I'll just use my hand, I'll just use a rag. But if I actually need to scrub something, I actually have some wooden slash natural fiber brushes that I can use instead and those brushes can actually be composted. Another thing is plastic wrap. Ever since moving out and living on my own, I've never bought this for myself. But what I do instead, I actually just, if I need to cover, if a recipe says to cover something with plastic wrap, I'll just cover it with a towel. And that's really the only case I, I would ever use plastic wrap. Along the same lines is aluminum foil. I actually use aluminum foil for one thing very frequently and that is when I make seitan. That just works the best for me. I've not really figured out any other sustainable swap yet, but what I do, when I do use aluminum foil, I will use it over and over and over again. I'll just use a towel like I would for plastic wrap. I also don't buy parchment paper. Instead, I have some reusable silicone mats, which might cost a little bit upfront. Mine were pretty reasonable price, but they have saved me from buying any parchment paper ever again. They are used indefinitely. I also don't buy cooking spray and I did I did this unintentionally actually. When I bought the silicone baking mats, I realized I don't use cooking spray anymore. There's no need for me to use it other than the occasional muffins. So I just quit buying cooking spray. And if I need to oil a pan or anything, I'll just use some regular oil or some coconut oil. I also don't buy disposable cutlery. I know a lot of especially American families will still purchase disposable cutlery for their homes, but that's just something that I never bought for my own home. Instead, I just use regular silverware and I wash it. Along those lines, I also don't buy disposable dishes like styrofoam and paper plates and bowls. Just not a thing I do. An alternative to that is if you are having a get together, you can just have your guests bring their own utensils and plate. I also don't buy disposable zipper bags. This, like plastic wrap and aluminum foil, never bought this for myself just stuff that we've been gifted and I'm still going through them from two years that we've lived in this house. So I'll use them on occasion if I wanna gift someone a SCOBY to store tortillas in. I've got this gigantic plastic bag, but I use it over and over and over again for my tortillas. So that's one option. You can just reuse the plastic bags you already have, or you can buy silicone zipper bags. Instead of doing that, I just use containers I already have. I don't really see the need to use a bag style device when you can just use a container. Another interesting one is green onions. I bought these probably a year ago. I stick them in water, they grow, and then I chop them when I need them, and then they grow again in a week or two, and it's an endless supply of green onions. Not that buying green onions is extremely wasteful, but this is just a way that you can save money and a little bit of food waste as well. Similar to that is basil. I bought basil once in a plastic packaging, so I saved one leaf, I propagated it, and I made my own basil plant. I didn't make it. 
I grew my own basil plant. One thing that I think is silly for people to continue to buy is jars. It might be nice to buy a bunch of matching ones, but maybe try to get over that and instead use what you already have. There's no need to buy jars because so much of what we buy already is in glass. If you have a bunch of glass, I highly encourage that you save it. Use that instead of buying brand new jars. Tortillas. I should have found myself making these yesterday. I'll put my, my quick recipe in the blog post that goes along with this video. The way I make tortillas is super simple and you can alternate the different types of flours as you prefer. This is something that I quit buying because they're so easy to make. Literally the easiest bread to make and they always come in plastic when you buy them at the store. The other great part about tortillas when you make them homemade, you know exactly what's going into them and you can flavor them however you'd like. Similar to that is croutons. So what I do is kind of a double zero waste hack. I will actually buy bread from the clearance section at the store, which reduces food waste because it's gonna get thrown away anyway. And then I just bake the bread until it dries out and boom, I've got croutons. <laughs> the next one is veggie broth. Again, I should have filmed myself making this cause I just made some yesterday. What I do is I collect a crap ton of veggie scraps. I store them in the freezer so they don't rot or anything. Once I have a lot of veggie scraps, I will throw them into a huge stock pot, cover it completely with water, let it boil for an hour, turn the heat off, let it cool. And then you have veggie broth, so easy. Especially when you eat a vegetable heavy diet, this is super easy to make. I guess an alternative to this, if you still eat meat, is you can use animal bones to make your own animal stock. I also make my own peanut butter. I quit buying it in plastic, which buying it in glass is fine, especially if you use my hack from earlier and you reuse the jar. That's what I did. I bought one glass natural peanut butter. I used the jar, saved that glass jar, and now I make my own peanut butter. I started doing this because we were going through probably two plastic jars of peanut butter per month, and I was just like, this is so much plastic. Another hack, I also use those old peanut butter jars still from over a year ago to store my veggie broth in. That's really it. I have a recipe for the peanut butter and the vegetable broth and the tortillas all on my blog. I'll leave them linked down below if you'd like to check those out. Another thing I make myself is jam. I quit buying jam from the store. So what I do is I just buy some frozen strawberries, which unfortunately come in plastic, but I simmer them down, smash them, add some chia seeds and a little bit of lemon juice, and that's it. So much less sugar, a lot better for you. That's really it. I don't have a recipe for that, but that's all I do. That's the recipe. The last thing on this list is butter. Most of the time I'll honestly just substitute coconut oil because it's close enough, but when it does come to baking, butter really does make a difference. Another one is bottled tea and coffee. And that is mostly because when you buy bottled drinks, you're really just paying for water and packaging. So making your own tea and coffee at home saves so much waste. Along those lines is coffee filters. So when I do make actual like ground coffee, I'll make it in a French press, either cold brew or hot, but I've kind of been on an instant coffee kick. I'm not a coffee snob, so I'm not picky and it is so much easier, it's so much quicker, and since I'm not picky about flavor or anything, it works for me. Something else I don't buy is tea bags. We are still going through a bunch of tea bags we bought forever ago, but moving forward, when I do have to buy new tea, I buy it loose leaf. Something else in the kitchen, I don't buy single purpose items. So what I mean is like a bunt pan. All you can really do with that is make a bunt cake. If I need it, I'll ask a neighbor or a friend to borrow it. But for the most part, when I'm purchasing something for myself, I see if one, it has multiple purposes, whether it's designed to or not. Um, and then two, I just see if I can find another alternative, if I can use something else instead that has more purposes or if I can just borrow it. Another thing I quit buying is traditional snacks, kind of like Hostess cakes, Little Debbie's, any of that, not just because they're not vegan, but also because they all come individually packaged and they're full of sugar and they're not great for you. Instead, if I need a snack, I will just snack on whole fruit, canned fruit even, nuts, dried fruits, all sorts of stuff like that. Something that comes kind of in bulk, you know, you get a whole big bag of nuts and not just like five nuts in an individual package. Similar to that, I also don't buy individually packaged candies. I realized how wasteful it was to buy a bag of candy each week that had 20 little individual bag packaged candies inside. And once I really got involved in the zero waste movement, I'm just like, mm, I can't do this anymore. It's kind of against what I stand for. I also don't buy pre-made sauces and dressings. If I need anything, I will just make it myself. I keep all the base ingredients like oil, mayonnaise, vinegar, stuff like that kept at home. I can make vinaigrettes and sesame dressing and peanut sauce and everything like that. Similar to that one, I also don't buy pre-made box mixes for things like cakes, brownies, pancakes, all that sort of stuff. I'll just make it from stuff I have at home, which all that stuff really it has the same base, just different proportions of flour, sugar, water, and oil. It's very easy to find recipes for all that stuff online without having to buy packaged mix. This one's not necessarily kitchen 
I just didn't know where else to put it. I don't buy brand new gadgets and tech. If I need to buy new technology, I will buy it secondhand. I'll leave a video linked up here as well as down below about why tech is so important to buy secondhand as well as to get rid of properly. Dan, if you're watching, you're probably gonna laugh at this one. I quit buying mugs. Yay for me. That might seem like, like why would you quit buying mugs? That's not a zero waste thing. I was buying mugs excessively. I think when we moved here, I probably had 30 mugs. Also when we moved here, I wasn't really a big coffee or tea drinker. I just liked mugs and I never used them. <laughs> so I quit buying them. I have got like four mugs now that I really cherish and love. I really have done a very good job about reducing how many mugs I own and about not buying anymore. The last thing for the kitchen is I don't buy plastic kitchenware. I kind of already touched on this earlier with the plasticware, but I also don't buy like single use solo cups or anything like that. Again, I just use regular reusable items. Though something with all of those, you can reuse the plastic ones because it doesn't become waste until you actually waste it. Moving on to cleaners and laundry. The first one is dryer sheets. This is another thing like paper towels that I just think is extremely unnecessary. I guess they might help your clothing smell a little better, but why does your clothing need to smell like artificial fragrance? I think they might also be designed to reduce static, but that's what my hat comes in for. I use wool dryer balls, but there are also silicone alternatives. I will leave a bunch of brands linked down below. I also don't use fabric softener. Again, I think that one's completely unnecessary as well. I also don't use bleach. Another thing that I think is unnecessary, I also think it is harmful for us and for the water. So I just straight up don't use bleach. <laughs> if I need some sort of stain remover, I actually have this waterless stain remover bar from Bunch of Farmers, which is really cool. It saves so much waste as well as it is completely natural. Another thing I quit buying is laundry detergent. Well, commercial laundry detergent. I still wash my clothes, don't worry, but I use soap nuts. If this is the first time you've ever heard of that, you're probably like, what? Soap nuts? They're literally nuts or berries. They are found in Asia. And when you get them wet, they turn soapy. It's really cool. Plus you can actually compost them once they are done with being used. <laughs> They can be used over and over again for several loads. An alternative to that is True Earth. I really wanna try them someday. They are a concentrated sheet of detergent and then you throw that into your washer and then it's also a waterless option as well. I also don't buy rags similar to the paper towel thing. If in the kitchen, I just don't buy new rags. Instead, I'll use old towels that got dingy or torn up. I'll use old t-shirts or anything like that. I don't buy all purpose cleaner anymore. Instead, I make my own. I have a video and a blog post. I will leave linked down below. <laughs> got lots of resources linked down below today. But for this all purpose cleaner, it is just a vinegar citrus cleaner diluted with a little bit of water. It does not disinfect anything, but it does really do the job when it comes to getting grime off of stuff. I also quit buying specific cleaners, things like a toilet cleaner and a shower cleaner and a floor cleaner. There's no need to buy 42 different cleaners when an all-purpose cleaner will get the job done. I quit buying disposable mop heads. I just use a washable one for our steam mop instead of something like you might use on a Swiffer. Even traditional mop heads are designed to be thrown away too. I also don't buy disposable wipes, things like Clorox wipes that you might use to wipe down a desk or something. I think those are extremely wasteful when you can get a spray and a washable rag. Lastly in this category is spray bottles. So I'm still working through some of the cleaners we actually bought when we first got here. And when I run out of one of those cleaners, I just clean it out really well and reuse the spray bottle for something else. Moving on to the bathroom, I quit buying hair ties. I actually talked about this in the weird ways I live low waste video, but I just find hair ties on the ground. So I just wash those hair ties, I sanitize them, and you can do the same thing. While picking up litter, I find something that action I can actually use in my own home. I also don't buy disposable razors anymore. So the razor I did use, the only the head was disposable, which was a much better option than the entire thing being disposable. But I made the swap to just using an electric razor, which is something that you really don't hear zero waste people using. You always like, everyone's got their aesthetically pleasing, their beautiful safety razor. But we have an electric razor. I just use what we already had. I also don't buy shaving cream because I use an electric razor. But before that, I actually quit using shaving cream as well because conditioner or coconut oil actually makes a pretty good shaving cream as well. I'll actually also show you the shaving cream that Dan uses. It is a block of shaving cream, which is really cool because you always hear of like a shampoo bar, a conditioner bar. He actually has a shaving cream bar, which is really cool. And he actually started using both of those things before we started going into the zero waste world. Along those lines, I don't buy conditioner anymore. I'm still working through a bottle that I got forever ago. But after that, I'm probably not gonna buy conditioner anymore. For a while there, I was using apple cider vinegar as a conditioner. Plus I only wash my hair once or twice a week anyways. So there's, 
I don't think conditioner is a necessary item, especially for my hair type. I also quit buying bottled shampoo. I use a shampoo bar instead. They last just as long, if not longer, and they can come packaged in paper instead of plastic. And the best part is it contains zero water, so it's less emissions when shipping as well. I also quit buying separate soaps, sort of like the cleaner thing. I don't have a separate face soap, hand soap, body soap. Some people are gonna hate me for saying that. I just buy a big box of bar soap and I just use it for everything. I also quit buying tissues. I did a tutorial for this back on Instagram. I just cut up old t-shirts that would not be donated. They're either too dingy to do so or they're a shirt that nobody will buy. And I use them as reusable tissues or hankies. I also quit buying specific hair products, things like gel and hairspray. I did this not for the zero waste aspect, but because my hair was literally falling out. I had been using gel and hairspray for two years straight, and then I noticed I was getting bald spots. And that's because a lot of these things contain harmful chemicals. So I just quit using it altogether. I also quit buying anything with microbeads or microplastics in them. I like glitter, hand sanitizer, and face wash. I just don't buy these items, period. But if I were, I would just find a option without microbeads in them. I also quit buying loofahs because most loofahs are made out of plastic. Plus, I also don't think these are necessary when you're using a bar of soap anyway. Another thing I quit buying is perfume. These also contain a lot of harmful chemicals in them. So if I feel the need to use a perfume type of thing. I made my own out of water and essential oils. It gets the job done. I also quit buying cotton balls and cotton rounds, you know, to take off your makeup or to take off your nail polish. I still have some left from when I used to buy them, but for my makeup, I actually use reusable makeup remover wipes that I made for myself out of an old t-shirt. There are a bunch of brands that you can buy from as well, but I decided to upcycle an old t-shirt into my own for a double zero waste project. I also quit buying lotion. Honestly, a big factor for that is that I live in a very humid climate, so my skin doesn't really get dried out. So in the future, moving forward, I would just buy a plasticless option. I would get something like a lotion bar. I also quit buying any single-use menstrual products. I just use reusable ones. If you're interested, I'd like to make a video more about reusable menstrual products. So if you're interested, definitely let me know down below or let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. I also quit buying travel size products. I still have them, of course, because you know, there's this section of a store where you can buy individual tubes of toothpaste and individual little tiny shampoos and conditioners that you use about five times and then you throw it away and get a new one. Instead, I just use the containers I already had from the last time I purchased them and then I just refill them over and over again. Also, I literally refill my own mini toothpaste. That's how dedicated I am. I also quit buying dry shampoo. This is a super easy DIY to do at home. And I literally hear no zero wasters talking about this, especially for with how many that don't wash their hair. I'm surprised they don't talk about it more. I just use baby powder. And then once I run out of the baby powder I have, I'm just gonna use cornstarch because that's something that I always have on hand. Either of those work really well. You can also add a little bit of cocoa powder, charcoal powder, or whatever other color to help it match your hair tone a bit better. Something else I quit buying at home spa items, things like bath salts, face masks, and other things along those lines. I use them if I get them as a gift, of course, but I just quit buying them for myself. The last thing when it comes to the bathroom that I quit buying is a lot of vitamins and supplements. I still take some occasionally if I feel like I'm not getting the required nutrients for my food just because I'm not an expert I highly encourage you to consult your doctor and of course try to get all your nutrients you can from food and then supplement after that moving on to office supplies the first one I want to talk about is pens I quit buying them because one these are another easy thing that you can just find on the ground I actually just talked about this on my Instagram story the other day the pens that I have they are the pilot brand they actually make refills so instead of buying the entire pen you can just throw away the empty ink cartridge and buy yourself a new ink cartridge it's still plastic, but it's a lot less plastic. I also quit buying pencils, same thing. You can easily find them on the ground randomly, but if you still feel like you need to buy pencils, I highly encourage you to buy a mechanical pencil. If you keep track of it, take good care of it. It will last you a really long time. And of course it's refillable as well. I also quit buying rubber bands. One thing I do is I use old stretched out hair ties in place of rubber bands, or you can just reuse what you get from the grocery store when it comes like, you know, your bunch of kale or your thing of celery. A lot of those come with rubber bands on them. Just keep them and you'll never have to buy them again. I also quit buying paper books. Instead, I just buy eBooks. If I can't find it in an eBook, I try to search at my library or see if I can borrow it from someone instead. Along those lines, I quit buying bookmarks. Instead, I just use old receipts, scrap pieces of paper, things like that. A big tip though, do not dog ear your books. I mean, you can, but your books will last a lot longer if you actually do use a bookmark. Use a bookmark, but use something you already have. I also quit buying boxes, whether it be for moving, for packing, for sending a package, for organizing. I just use boxes I already have. I still buy a lot of food that comes in boxes as well as when we get stuff shipped to us because it's inevitable. We all shop online still. 
I just keep those boxes and use them over and over again. I also quit buying planners, um, mostly because I'm not good at using them. I talked about this on Instagram in December. I only ever make it through like the first four months of using a planner, but then 2020 rolled around and I'm just like, new year, new me, I'm gonna be good at using a planner. And then I didn't use it. So moving forward, I just use a regular notebook. If I have something I need to do, I write it down and just make a to-do list instead, as well as there's so many e-planners out there. I also quit buying sticky notes. I have all sorts of scrap paper, so I'll just use scrap paper instead. I also quit buying craft supplies I don't need. This just goes along the lines of minimalism in general. I quit buying a lot of things impulsively and this goes with craft items. I've learned to control myself and only buy what I need for projects. Lastly, in this category is random office supplies and stationery. This was another thing I was so obsessed with. So that's just another one of those things that I asked myself, do I really need this? And if I do, do I need it now? And just try to talk myself through the whole process. The next category I'd like to talk about is around the home. The first one is plastic water bottles. As you've probably seen in a lot of videos, this is my, my baby. I have had this for, I think two years now. I use a water filter and my reusable water bottle instead of buying plastic bottles. I also quit buying dog poop bags. I buy compostable ones when I need to, but for the most part, I don't need to. I just reuse what I already have and I don't have to buy any brand new. I also quit buying dog and cat toys. Dog Dogs and cats are occupied easily. There's really no need to buy brand new toys. When it comes to knickknacks, that was another thing that I just, I loved. I love getting little cute things, little trinkets to put on my desk and stuff. They just sit there and collect dust. Unless it has very important meaning to me, I'm not gonna purchase it anymore. That goes for souvenirs on vacation as well as just going to Target and buying random crap. I also quit buying planters. I just upcycle things from my home. I've used old ice cream containers tin cans and other things like that. There's so many containers that we just are gonna throw away anyways. So why not repurpose it and save more waste and more money from buying a new planter? I also quit buying any magazines and other subscriptions. Sure, it might be fun to get a recipe or read an article, but then what are you gonna do with it? It's gonna sit on your shelf forever and magazines can't be recycled because of the paper that they are made on. Something else that I quit buying is home decor. If I feel like I need something, I will make it myself. I've got a couple paintings in here that I've made myself. This thing back here, I actually purchased from a local artist. So that is the next one. I quit buying any big box store art. I will just buy from local artists instead. I've talked about this throughout the video, but largely I quit buying impulse purchases. If I see something and I'm like, that's cute, I want it. I'm like, okay, slow down. Do I actually want it? Do I need it? Can I live without it? And then another practice that I've been doing to be more mindful is to, if I think of something like say, I need a new water bottle, I'll write it down. And then if I think about it again throughout the week or the month, I probably actually need it or want it. But if I never think about it again, chances are I really don't need it. I also quit buying cheaply made items. And this is something that I recognize comes with privilege. I have the financial means to buy higher quality items. So if you don't have the financial means to buy higher quality items, buy what you need to. But if you are financially able, I really highly encourage you to think your processes through. Instead of buying that $3 t-shirt, maybe buy a $20 t-shirt because it will last you longer. It's made of higher quality. And that goes with anything that goes with tech, that goes with furniture. Something else I quit buying, and I never really bought frequently, is pre-cut flowers. Just because they are grown to be cut, and then they sit in your kitchen or your living room and die within a week. <laughs> Instead, if I feel like I want flowers, I will just get some seeds and plant them myself. Something else is seasonal and trendy items. I love decorating, especially for holidays and seasons. I think it's really cute, but I really try not to buy as much as I can. If I feel like I want something, I'll try to make it myself. Something else is candles and air fresheners. And air fresheners is an, again, one of those things that just contains mystery fragrance as an ingredient. I don't buy anything that my phone can do. So I don't buy like a calculator. I don't buy a flashlight. Um, I don't buy a calendar. I don't buy an alarm clock because my phone comes equipped with all that. And when you pay hundreds of dollars for a phone, you pay for its features too. So why spend more money on things that your phone can already do? I also quit buying reusable bags like totes. This was another thing that I was really obsessed with. I love bags, but I realized I've got like 20 reusable bags. I do not need any more. I need to quit buying them. Even though they do help you save a lot of waste, there's no need to buy a bunch of them. Lastly, in this category is a calendar. I use my phone on occasion, but I really still like to have something to visualize. 
So when we first moved here, we bought a big dry erase calendar, which we can change with the months and never have to buy something like that again. Moving on to entertainment and gifts, something that I do not buy anymore is physical movies, like an actual DVD. Instead, I'll just stream it on Netflix or Prime or anything like that. Same with CDs. I don't buy physical CDs anymore. I just stream on something like Spotify. I also don't buy a gift wrap and gift bags. Instead, I will buy the person a blanket or a scarf or a reusable bag to gift their, their gift in. So that way they can have something that's reusable as well as usable in their life. I also don't buy bows for said gifts just because it's made out of plastic, it's wasteful, it's cute for about two seconds and then that's it. And then it's on this earth forever because it's made out of plastic. I also don't buy birthday cards and things of that nature. One, because they're expensive. Also, I really don't think people keep them. Instead, I'll write a more heartfelt note. So that way, one, it can be recycled if they don't want it. And two, it's got a little more meaning. And I also try not to buy things for people like physical objects. Although I do like to buy people like zero waste swaps, like a reusable water bottle or something. But instead, what I really love to do is I like to buy experiences for people. Lastly is clothing and accessories. When it comes to clothing, I quit buying brand new clothing. When I have to buy something, I will buy it secondhand. The exception I have is undergarments. I also quit buying single use, single occasion items like costumes, a party dress and other things like that. I will try to make a costume of what I already have, try to find the thing secondhand. I also quit buying uncomfortable clothing and shoes. This is something I was guilty of. Like even just still a year ago, I was just like, this is really cute. And if I wear it, I can just, bear with it squeezing my guts out for an hour or two. But then I'm like, now I never wanna wear those pants cause they hurt me. <laughs> Even if it's cute, I still talk myself out of it because if it's not comfortable, I'm not gonna wanna wear it. This one, this one's a good one. I quit buying logo t-shirts, event t-shirts. That's something that cannot be repurposed. When you buy a race shirt, you can donate it, but chances are the, re the donation facility is gonna throw it out because it doesn't mean anything to anyone else. Same with, you know, when families get like Dindler Family Vacation 2020 shirts. That makes me so angry <laughs> because no one besides the Dindler family in 2020 went on that vacation. So that shirt is straight up garbage when you're done with it. Okay, now I'm heated. I just quit buying those because I think they're extremely wasteful. I also quit buying more than one phone case. Again, you can ask Dan, I had so many phone cases when I was in high school. Now I just own the one, I cherish it, I love it, and I take good care of it. Lastly is multiple pair of sunglasses, just like the phone case. I used to own so many pair of sunglasses, but now I just own one. I found one I really, really love. I even found them secondhand. I take really good care of them. I always know where they are so I don't lose them. That is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it got a little bit long, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend some time with me. And thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. It really does help support my channel. And until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. And that's largely because when you buy bottled, I said that really weird. <laughs> I also don't buy laundry return. <laughs> Hand sanitizer and face wash. <laughs> I just fell.